Today's Bible study is titled New Creation. Wherefore, as a result of Christ dying for all rising again, see verses 14 to 15. Henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yes, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now henceforth know we him no more, in this manner. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. New things have come. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 16 to 18 Digging into this a bit we find, as a result of Christ dying for all and rising again, those who are in Christ can and should reckon something to be true by faith, and that is, verse 16, we no longer know Christ or any man in Christ, after the flesh. Something changed. And what changed, verse 17, is, instead of the earthly promises of Israel, who were concluded in unbelief along with the Gentiles for unbelief, Romans 11 verse 32, we have new provision from God. This provision from God is that for any man, woman and child who is in Christ, by simple belief of the gospel, there is a new a creature creation. Old things, knowing after the flesh, have passed away and the new things have come. Verse 18 continues to explain that now, all things are of God, and God has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. In other words, verse 19, rather than imputing the trespasses of the world to people, God instead reconciled the world, people unto himself in Christ. So, as a result of the new things that have come in the place of the old, we are a part of that new creation and enjoy a new standing before God as reconciled. Note, reconciled in this setting means a renewed friendship after enmity or simply a making of peace. But what new things are now come which allowed God to do this? The answer to this question takes more digging, but I suggest we consider what Paul had previously written to the Corinthian believers about something which had not previously existed, under the old things that passed away. The new things that are now come are addressed as follows, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Now you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 to 14 and 27 As a result of Christ dying for all and rising again, the old things passed away and God introduced new things. In this dispensation of the grace of God, wherein those that simply believe the gospel are united with Christ in his death and resurrection, such that, now you are the body of Christ. This is us in Christ, via the new creation. But it doesn't stop there, for in Paul's subsequent inspired writings in Colossians 1 verses 25 to 27, the conclusion of all of this is, not only us in Christ, but also verse 27. God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. By this new creation we have all of Christ and Christ has all of us, an incredible new creation identity in him. What a deal! Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.